Hola grupos pequeños, bienvenidos a Talk It Over. Sí, estamos emocionados de que sus grupos pequeños estén con nosotros esta semana. Lo que están a punto de ver y la conversación que van a tener les va a ayudar a profundizar en la palabra de Dios y a descubrir cómo vivir el propósito de Dios en sus vidas diarias. En el video verán unos minutos de enseñanza, seguido con unas preguntas que van a salir en tu pantalla para que lo puedan hablar como grupo. Pulsen la pausa y conversen sobre lo que acaban de oír. Y cuando estén listos, Pulsen play y sigan con la siguiente sección. Los grupos pequeños son un lugar donde cada voz importa. Tu voz importa. Sabemos que algunas personas estarán más dispuestas que otros a conversar, uh -huh. pero algunos solamente van a querer escuchar. De hagan el esfuerzo para que todos tengan ese tiempo de compartir. Quizás puede ser algo sencillo, una pregunta sobre algo que quieren aclarar. Asegúrense de que todos participen, que hagan preguntas y que compartan sus pensamientos. Ahora, veamos el mensaje de esta semana. Asegúrate de dejar un poco de tiempo al final para que puedan orar como grupo y que disfruten de Talk It Over. So let me on this day give you Rick's rules of rubble. <laughs> this isn't in your notes, but I'm going to give it to you anyway. Rick's rules of rubble. All right, here they are. Number one, rubble is a part of life. In other words, you can't avoid it. You're going to have piles of trash in your life. You're going to have stuff that piles up in your life that you haven't dealt with. And the, the bigger the pile gets, the more frustrated you get by it. You're fatigued by the work, but you're frustrated by the complexity of all you've got to do. So rubble piles up. Rick's rule number two, you have to clean it out of your life periodically. You have to take out the trash. Emotionally, you take out the trash by confession to God. Number three, if you don't deal with it, it'll eventually take over. Uh, let me let you in on a little secret. You probably already figured this out. Trash multiplies when you aren't watching. <laughs> Have you noticed that? Uh, it just kind of multiplies. You go, where'd all that come from? How, how do the dishes pile up so quickly in the kitchen? How, how do clothes pile up so quickly in the bedroom? And so many, it just, they multiplies while you aren't watching. Let me give you a fourth rule of rubble. You don't always recognize what's rubble in your life, but other people do. Other people can see stuff in your life that you've allowed to stay there that's really holding you back, that's hindering you. And maybe you don't even see it because you're so, so used to living with it that you don't even realize it's rubble. There's some stuff you need to clean out and clear out in your life some activities, some relationships, some things, some events, some bad attitudes, some wrong thoughts, some misconceptions, mental, physical, emotional, spiritual rubble in your life that you need to clear out. You know, and a lot of people don't see it. We don't see it in our own lives, but other people see it. In fact, sometimes it takes an expert to point it out. By the way, that's why all those clean out shows on TV are so popular, where somebody comes in and helps them organize and say, man, you got trash all over here. Let's get, let's get your house cleaned out and cleaned up. Question, what's the rubble in your life? This was the second cause of discouragement in the, in the, in the Jews of Jerusalem. What's the rubble in your life? It's the stuff that keeps tripping you up. You might write that down. The rubble is the stuff that keeps tripping me up up in life. It may be a misconception, an attitude. It may be a habit. It's the stuff that keeps tripping you up. Rubble can be the trivia that wastes your time, that wastes your energy, that keeps you from accomplishing what's most important. They had a job to finish, finish the wall. Let's say we can't do it because there's so much trash laying around, we can't even get to rebuild the wall. What do you need to do? You need to just tell God about the rubble in your life and ask for help. Psalm 25, 18 says, come Lord and show me mercy. 
for I feel helpless and overwhelmed and in deep distress. If you're feeling helpless and overwhelmed and in deep distress in your life right now because of something that's holding you back, that's rubble and you need to deal with it. We're gonna look at the cause, a cure in just a second. But here's another uh, setback. Here's, here's the third setback that will cause you to be discouraged. And it happened in Nehemiah and it's, day and it's gonna happen to you. It's when I start to doubt my own ability. When I start to doubt my own ability, then this causes a sense of failure. Now, when you add that to fatigue, you got fatigue and you got frustration. Fatigue, it's taking too long. Frustration, it's too complicated. And then you start having a sense of failure. Well, now it's getting serious. I'm gonna get discouraged. That's the third part of Nehemiah 4 verse 10. The people said, look at this, the people said, we now realize that we cannot, not will not, we cannot finish this wall. Whoa, what just happened? New American Bible says, we will never be able to finish this wall. What happened? They've already built half of it. Why all of a sudden they've decided that they can't finish it? I mean, like I said, they've already built half of it, but now they've lost their confidence. Uh, you know, now, now they, they feel, they're filled with self-doubt. Now they're questioning why they even started. Now they say, well, you, know, why, you know, I was foolish to even think about doing this. You ever felt that way? Why did I take this job? Why did I get married? Why did I make this move? You start second guessing yourself. You start doubting yourself. You start filling yourself with feelings of failure. And like, I can't do this. You lose your confidence. You start feeling like, like you're a failure because of the frustration and fatigue, and they, they feel the failure. They are unable to finish the task as quickly as they originally planned. And the result is their confidence goes in the toilet. It goes down the drain. They lose their heart, they lose their enthusiasm. Now let me ask, as a pastor who loves you, a real important question. How do you handle failure? How do you react when your plans collapse? How do you react when it's taken longer than you thought, it's more complicated than you thought, and you start doubting, do I even have the ability to do this? What do you do? Do you give in to self-pity? And you have a pity party, poor me, everybody hates me, nobody loves me, I'm gonna go eat worms. <laughs> you have a pity party and you invite you, me, myself, and I, or you start complaining, and you start saying, it's impossible. You, know, you start having that feeling, you know, about the time I, I, I make ends meet, somebody moves the ends. Or do you start blaming other people? And say, well, they let me down, or they didn't tell me how hard it was gonna be. When... Listen, if at first you don't succeed, you're normal. <laughs> you're normal. Nobody succeeds at first. Successful people simply see failure as a temporary setback. This whole series is on learning the spiritual quality of resilience, of trusting God for a comeback. There is no comeback without first a setback. And that setback may be this third one where you just start doubting your own ability to go, I don't think I'm even up for the task. I don't think I can do this. I don't think I can finish what I've started. Now finally, there's a fourth setback. And, and we see this in this next verse, and it is this. You start to give up. You feel like giving up when the opposition grows stronger. Now, when you start a progress uh, project, probably nobody even cares, they don't even notice. And, uh, and so, you don't have any opposition usually at the start. But as you start growing, you start being effective, the opposition, people aren't gonna like the changes you make in you, the changes you make in your marriage, in your family, in your job, the things you're trying to do for the Lord. And the opposition starts coming against you, the more visible you become. And guess what? The moment you put your shingle out and say, well, I'm open for business, somebody's gonna start throwing rocks at it. And that causes fear.
Number one, first thing Nehemiah did, first thing you need to do, reorganize whatever's not working. Maybe something in your life, maybe something in your family, maybe something in your business, in your job. You may be doing the right thing, but in the wrong way. A lot of times when we get discouraged at what we're doing, we think, well, I must be doing the wrong thing. No, you may be doing the right thing, you're just doing it in the wrong way. And God says, I want you to do it differently. Keep doing what you're doing, just do it differently. Nehemiah 4.13 says this. So I stationed armed guards, this is Nehemiah narrating in. I stationed armed guards at the most vulnerable places of the wall. And I assigned people by families with their swords and lances and their bows. Now, let me explain what's going on here. Nehemiah says, okay guys, we, we got enemies who wanna attack us, so here's what we're gonna do. Half of you are gonna do the work, working on the wall, and the other half of you are gonna stand guard, and then we're gonna switch. And the other half will do work on the wall, and the other half will guard. What's he doing? He's just coming up with a new plan. They did not give up on the goal. They just devised a new strategy. Now here's the point. Whatever you're discouraged at right now doesn't necessarily mean you need to stop doing it, doesn't mean you're doing the wrong thing. It may be, mean you're doing it in the wrong way. Nehemiah said, we gotta change the way we're doing this. And maybe you need to change the way you're doing your schedule, change the way you're doing your diet, change the way you're doing, the way you're relating to people. See, the natural temptation is to give up on the dream. No, 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 no. So, let's just get personal. You got a problem right now? Well, don't give up. Just change where you do it. You deeply in debt? Well, then you're gonna need to reorganize your budget. Are you out of shape? You're gonna need to reorganize your lifestyle, your eating patterns. Are you overcommitted in your schedule? You're gonna to need to reorganize your time. Where do you need to do what Nehemiah did? Reorganize whatever's not working. You may have a homework project this week. Now, that may mean that you need to eliminate some things out of your schedule or out of your life where you clean out the rubble. That's the clutter. That's the time wasters. That's the trivial things. You know, it, it's foolish to start a business with, without a business plan. Nobody in their right mind would ever do that, start a business without a business plan. But most Americans plan everything except their lives. Do you have a life plan? I want you to notice in the, the, this plan that Nehemiah comes with, he says he posted them by families. What does that mean? He, he made sure that they had support. What's your support group? One of the reasons you may be discouraged is because you're trying to handle everything by yourself. You need a support group. You need to be in a small group. You need to start a small group. Hebrews 4.25 says this, some people have got out of the habit of meeting with other believers, but we must not do that. Instead, we should keep on encouraging each other. Who's encouraging you? Who are you encouraging? You need to be in a small group. Maybe your action step this week is say, oh, you know, the reason I'm discouraged is I'm not in a small group. I don't have a support group. He posted them by groups, by families. You need a spiritual family. If you don't have a spiritual family, you need to join Saddleback Church. Take class 101, or joining the family, discovering the benefits of being a part of a spiritual family. We teach that class every month at every campus. So that's where you need to reorganize whatever's not working in your life. Don't give up on the dream. Just look at it from a different direction. You can get some help on that. We can help you on that. You can get some counsel. And you need to get some support. Second thing Nehemiah did, reorganize whatever's not working. Number two, refocus on God. That's the next verse. In Nehemiah 4.14, it says this. Then, Nehemiah says, I looked over the situation and I called together all the leaders and the people and I said to them, don't be afraid of the enemy, remember the Lord. Underline that, remember the Lord who is great and glorious. He says, you know what? You've been so busy working for God, you've forgotten God. Has that happened in your life? 
Have you forgotten the Lord that you're working for? You're trying to serve? You can just be so busy doing the work for the Lord, you forget God's work in you. What you need to do is you need to refocus on God. You need to recommit yourself to Christ. You need to draw on spiritual resources. The Bible says when David got discouraged, it says, quote, he encouraged himself in the Lord. It doesn't say encouraged himself by watching TV or he encouraged himself by playing golf. It says he encouraged himself in the Lord. He says, remember the Lord, underline that. What do I remember when I'm discouraged? I remember three things. God's goodness to me in the past, God's closeness to me in the present, and God's power for me in the future. I get my mind off the discouraging circumstances, and I remember God's goodness and God's closeness and God's power, and remember that your thoughts determine your feelings, Discouragement is a feeling. If you want to change your feelings, you change what you think about. One of my favorite verses is in Jonah 2.7. Jonah swallowed up by the great fish and in the bottom of the ocean, he says this, when I'd lost all hope, I once again turned my thoughts to the Lord. That's what you need to do. If you've lost all hope today, you, you need to turn your thoughts to the Lord. David's antidote was the same thing, Psalm 119, 125, when he said, I'm completely discouraged, so revive me by your word. You need to get in the word of God. You need to be having a quiet time. If you're discouraged today, it means this, you're not spending enough time in the word of God. You're spending more time on social media than you are listening to God. That's a clear sign you're not spending enough time in the word because the word revives, refreshes, restores, rebuilds. So I reorganize what needs to be changed. Keep doing what you're doing, but do it in a new way. And then I remember and I refocus on the Lord. And then the third thing that Nehemiah does is he tells them to do this, and you need to do it too. Resist, resist the discouragement. This is your choice. You're gonna have to fight it. Resist the discouragement. You don't give in to it. Nehemiah 4.14, the second part says this. Nehemiah says, then I told them, fight. Fight for your brothers. These are people who wanted to give up. Fight for your brothers, fight for your sons, fight for your daughters, fight for your wife, fight for your homes. Don't you dare give in without a fight. Friends, we're in a spiritual battle. We're in a warfare every day of your life. We're not in a playground, we're in a battleground. And as believers, we are called to engage in a spiritual battle every day of our life. Ultimately, it's already been won, but there are battles going on every day. And we are in a supernatural struggle and mortal combat. And Satan is called the accuser of the believers and he's accusing you every day. And he would love to neutralize your effectiveness by discouraging you. His favorite weapons, Satan's two favorite weapons. I've been a pastor for 40 years. I've been walking with the Lord for about 55 years. And I know that the two favorite discouragement tools, are fa two favorite uh, weapons of Satan are distraction and discouragement. Distraction to get you off your focus and discouragement. James 4, 7 says this, resist the devil. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. We are at war with negative thoughts, negative forces, negative emotions that wanna keep us from developing our potential from God, for, for God. So make this, I, I, let me just be as clear as I can possibly say this. If you're discouraged right now, you need to hear this. Discouragement is a choice. It's a choice. You don't have to be discouraged. Nobody's holding a gun to your head right now. The reason you are discouraged is you are choosing to listen to discouraging thoughts, and that's your choice. You don't have to listen to those discouraging choice, those, those thoughts, it's your choice. You know the difference between great people and ordinary people? Great people simply refused 
to be discouraged. Great people are just ordinary people with an extraordinary amount of determination.